<laughs> Alright, so, uh, this is Robert Randall, and, uh, this is a really cool guitar. Uh, it's what you might call, like, a, a player's grade instrument, because it's, it's had its, its fair share of work done uh, to it over the years, and, um, and a fair amount of modifications. Uh, including including some work that I've done to it myself um, since I got it oh I don't know a year and a half ago or so uh, but let me tell you a little bit about what it is first this is a uh, Bay State guitar and these were made in in Boston uh, from about 1865 I think yeah 1865 until uh, 1903 by this guy uh, John Haynes, who uh, when you when you look through uh, nerdy uh, instrument books, you see uh, a lot of Bay State really fantastic Bay State banjos and some Bay State guitars with really um, famous famous inlay artists doing doing uh, the decoration. So they're somewhat somewhat well known uh, guitar maker of uh, the 19th century. And, and this guitar was made towards the end of the run. This is an A3 model, which is uh, actually had registered with the official Bay State Registry. And, um, and I wanted to verify that it was what it was, because it has a very faint uh, uh, model and serial number here on the headstock. And it would have had a sticker on the back of, uh, of the headstock here. Uh, that's been removed at some point during during someone's work or who knows who knows what happened but it's a Brazilian rosewood guitar and uh, and I guess uh, according to uh, the website they have some sort of uh, kind of European spruce top on them uh, and this is the grand concert model which measures over uh, 13 inches I think it's like 13 and a half it's like it's about 13 and a half inches and the scale length would be somewhere around just over 24 and a half which is relatively long scale length uh, for for this for this period and, and similar similar uh, parlor guitars that I've worked on in the past made by Regal or, uh, or or some other companies tend to have more like a 24 inch scale so this is kind of, sort of a, a big guitar for its period comparable to oh I don't know like a Martin O I suppose or maybe even a double O um, and um, <clears throat> Now, as for the modifications, oh, oh, also, it, it's it's a ladder braced guitar. Uh, yeah, like I said, Brazilian rosewood back and sides, uh, ebony fingerboard, um, ebony nut. Uh, when I got it, it had a plastic uh, saddle here, and I, I replaced it with a bone saddle. I ended up refretting it because it had f a, a really crazy fret job, partially. Uh, whoever had this guitar initially, whoever did uh, the initial restoration on this guitar, when they reset the neck, I don't know, the uh, the fingerboard, they, they, I don't know if they lost some or ended up, somehow the fingerboard ended up uh, lowering at, at the very tongue of it. So there's a significant drop off in the last, oh, I don't know, three frets or so. Now it's still, it still frets and plays all the way up there. With varying degrees of success, but with uh, with with a lot of 19th century guitars, or at least 20th century guitars, uh, the up here is is sort of no man's land and and doesn't work. You're they're sort of lucky that this this guitar plays at all because it's seen it's seen uh, quite a bit of restoration. Um, another thing to note is I'm sure at some point, often what you see with these guitars is they have an old fashioned they would use these old fashioned screw capos that would leave divots in the neck. And uh, often what restorers end up doing is sort of shaving down the V here. This would have had a very deep V sort of neck and it's been shaved down and to no detriment the neck is still very straight 
and uh, and and in the end, it has a really great feel. It's almost like a, an early Fender neck in in the way it's it's V'd. Quite comfortable. If you have a, if you're a small hands person, this is a very comfortable guitar to play. Now, uh, the most major sort of stuff, in my estimation, that's been done to this guitar has to do with the back, these, this Brazilian rosewood back. And when I got it, it had all these cracks, cracks all over. The whole thing was cracked up. And, uh, and they had been cleated and repaired, but never filled. And, uh, and the cleats, uh, some of the cleats fell off when it was mailed to me. And so I took it upon myself. I ended up filling in all the cracks with... Uh, uh, Brazilian rosewood dust and uh, and hide glue, and then uh, just doing a little bit of uh, shellac touch up. So you can see this this back. It it looks pretty good, but you can see the cracks. I didn't do super glue invisible kind of kind of repairs because I wanted to make everything I did reversible and sort of challenge myself on this guitar. Um, it's had a couple. Yeah, it's had a lot of repair to the top, especially around the sound hole. There are a few pieces uh, that have been grafted in here and there, uh, some some prettier than others, uh, and, uh, and repaired cracks. I ended up uh, uh, repairing a crack that opened up on the top, but everything's cleated and everything's very very stable in this guitar now. It's been it's been up and going with these repaired cracks for for quite a while. And it's a great sounding guitar. You could even put uh, uh, very light steel strings on this. And it actually, the more I've been playing it, the more I've been thinking that that might be the best thing for it. I really like nylon strings. And it has this wonderful moody kind of quality because it's a ladder brace guitar. But I think with steel strings, it could be a very, very charming, like, uh, finger style kind of guitar. But that being said, it's a very lightly built guitar. There's a lot of saddle left uh, from the neck set. It, it could even it could even stand to come down slightly. Um, and so I wouldn't worry about uh, uh, steel strings pulling it too much. But in, I wouldn't put anything very very. I put silk and steels at most on this because it's incredibly thin top, incredibly thin back and sides. It's a very light guitar for as big as it is. And I'll put uh, sort of details about uh, the restoration of this guitar up on my website, so you can check it out at rsrandall.com. And if you want more details, and this this guitar is uh, going to be for sale here, I'm going to be trying to sell it through various channels, and uh, we'll see. You might you might have come to this video looking looking uh, at one of my ads for this guitar. So, but not a lot of stuff about Bay State guitars on YouTube anyway. So I, I figured. Might as well document it as long as I have it. It's such a wonderful guitar. I wish I, I wish I didn't have so many guitars here. <laughs>